Hey everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I was preparing to feed my European Nightcrawler worm buckets. My idea was just to bring the um, all the buckets up here and just bring the tripod over just a little bit every time. Each time we go from bucket to bucket rather than needing to swap each bucket out each time. But it just occurred to me that when we look at these, the proper orientation for the bucket needs to be the same way as the camera. So... I was just about to start rolling the camera when I realized this is the way it needs to be set up. So I think we're all set to go. Where's my glove? Aha, uh -huh. here it is. Let's get started. I'm a little pressed for time today, and that's the reason I wanted to see if I can sort of production line set up our feeding here. So it probably will help expedite things if all I need to do is nudge the tripod over a little bit here seems to get better every time every time we come in here we in the beginning we were just treating it as a compromise it was like hey you know what no plastic coverings in these bins let's try just paper and cardboard only and we're going to sort of sacrifice a little bit of moisture loss here on the surface in exchange for um, good airflow and we've never covered in plastic but at this point at 110 days of age I, I can just feel moisture right here at the top after taking those somewhat dry pieces of cardboard and paper off so now down here where this piece of um, coffee filter was resting, that's where we fed these little guys 14 days ago. We've gotten into this nice 14 day pattern now. The system's been fed eight times and the last six of those eight are ones that have had this 14 day interval in between the feedings. And I don't know what the population is in here. We've never really, I don't know. Never really observed huge mobs, but these are night crawlers. When I was starting out, I always had red wigglers, and you kind of got used to them coming over for the food and mobbing together and making a scene. <laughs> and when I started running night crawlers, it was a little bit of a surprise to see that they just didn't seem to do that so much. There wasn't a whole lot of uh, crowding around the food, so maybe they're more into the bedding and they just come over for the food when they need it or something like that. But uh, we're not going to be feeding on this side. I was just curious, besides bringing the feeding zone indicator, this you know, coffee filter over from, uh, from this side to cover the, the other side, which is where we're going to be feeding, um, I wanted to come over to this side also just to take a quick peek at how the banana peels are holding out after two weeks. Banana peels do take a little bit of time to break down. They're a somewhat a tougher substance. And I had just bumped into a, a few chunks of them. This was actually the, the stem of the... Um, banana peel and next to it were a bunch of other chunks of it while the stuff was frozen I was able to snap it into little tiny bits and drop it in here as small particles not that small but still small enough that you can spot them so I was just curious to see how those were coming along before we drop in today's feeding and I guess it was kind of nice to blend in a little bit of that dry material that we encountered along the way and oops I brought along an extra piece of paper <laughs> I don't know Can we return it to the banana area i think that's where we found it all right so we'll set this coffee filter aside we'll cover up when we're done feeding you might have noticed when we were coming in here when i was um showing the shot of all three containers there was also um a view of some of the things i had set out here for the feeding there was a couple grapefruits three grapefruits that were starting to develop some pretty interesting colors over on the um over on the counter this side was still looking okay but then it took on this weird appearance on the other side so I didn't know what the heck that was, and I didn't want to take the risk, and all three of them had it. And I was thinking to myself, hey, I got a place where I need to feed three systems. Let's give it to them. No visit to the freezer. Straight from the kitchen to here. <laughs> um, let's see. The last system's going to get the coffee filter that's holding the coffee right now. So what we'll do is we'll just give this one its share. I've only got one day's worth of coffee here in this filter. So, we'll hang on to this filter and the remainder of this coffee for the other two buckets so we can give a fair, equal amount to both systems. And since the last one's getting the filter, coffee filter, we'll just throw in this little bonus piece of newspaper. I've also got my, um, my shredded prepared bedding here. Shredded paper, little bits of leaves, even some castings blended in so it seemed like a nice thing to include a nice handful of this 
you know, I usually try to blend the coffee right into that stuff. Maybe I should have done it in a different sequence. The stuff I'm sprinkling in now is pulverized eggshell. And then I've also got pulverized grains and seeds in my little worm chow mixture. I figured to supplement the grapefruit, they're going to get some worm chow here too. And that to me seemed like a pretty good feeding. You know, especially considering when we checked in on them, we still saw leftovers of their banana. We'll, uh, you know, we'll let them keep nibbling on the banana, but hopefully the grapefruit will eventually take on some interest for them. And that stuff's got a lot of moisture in it too, and that's the reason I'm not adding moisture, because all I have to do is, you know, go below the surface just a tiny bit to get some night to get to some nice damp material. And now I'm also introducing all the juice that comes in with a, a big piece of citrus like that. So I think we'll, from a moisture perspective, we're in good shape. But I am prepared to add moisture if we need it, but I don't think we do. Now, on to bucket number two. We know that because we've got this little scribble. It just happens to look like the number two. And we're kind of in a clone mode over here, trying to manage each system very similar to each other so we can use it as a gauge to measure one you know one system's progress against the others I don't know, 110 days of age and now this is the what ninth feeding and kind of one of the systems where we're even trying to keep to a set schedule 14 day intervals and everything you would think that by now I would have uh, developed an affinity for one particular side or the other or one one bucket to the other <laughs> but here to me this just seems like I don't know right here I guess the objective is um, I think by taking the population of all three of these tubs all three of these buckets here that um, the worms all came from a single system so that population was split three ways so what was coming into each of these buckets was not quite the size population that I usually you know launch systems with it was a little bit deficient from that point of view but we didn't see that as a problem we figured if we gave them a lot of space fed them regularly they'd um they'd realize that they've got themselves a nice little area here with plenty of room to grow into and that they would do just that that was kind of the purpose of these systems my hope is that they react accordingly and you know lay down a whole bunch of cocoons make some babies so whatever I'm kind of burning through this one already because I feel like I'd like to get this done <laughs> I got to uh, I got other things to do today you know so I've got to get this buttoned up here but we'll give each system its fair share incomes like we did before starting in with I don't know should we change up the order let's let's kind of reverse it we'll bring in the handful of prepared loose bedding onto which we can place the nice coffee so it can sprinkle down and commingle with it and the other granular stuff that might benefit from having a medium in which to sprinkle down into is the chow let's dump that in there nicely as well before all this paper starts to soak up even more moisture from its surroundings it's still kind of loose it's damp but it's still kind of loose should allow us to blend in some of this granular stuff let's return this to our oops oopsie doopsie <laughs> trying to preserve this a little bit more fell out because the filter fell apart but that's for the last system that's that's their share and here too supplemental <laughs> paper and I don't, I don't remember did both I don't know do we give, give two handfuls or just one and what about grit Jeez, I'm not watching over myself I'll totally miss stuff every time <laughs> all right here too we can drop some of this dry stuff down into the hole leaving just nice damp castings out on the surface who knows at some point in the future we might come in here and the, the surface might just be damp on its own just from being really rich in castings and really capable of hanging on to its own moisture I don't know with only cardboard and paper it's more likely that it'll always remain a little dry on the surface but it doesn't seem too bad all right last system bucket number three 
Um, hopefully, kind of humming along just the, like the other ones are. There's been no, um, no major deviation. You know, we didn't even talk about how the progress of the banana peels were doing in that other system. We just kind of like plowed down into there. Didn't see any problems. <laughs> Back filled the hole and kept going. I don't know, maybe they did a bigger job, bigger job on the banana peels and I just didn't bump into enough of them to trigger a, a curiosity about them. I mean, here's a stem. It's stem is going to be there after two weeks regardless of how efficient the worms are. But here too, maybe they've um, maybe they've taken care of the majority of the banana peels that they got last time. Hmm. I don't know, maybe that first bin is a little just a little slow with all those leftover peels in there still, right? Who knows? All right, let's get this last little bit shoved aside so we can get in today's feeding. So I guess the whole idea by marking the sit uh, the feeding zone from time to time we alternate if you haven't noticed we've just been switching back and forth so besides keeping to that set schedule of feeding intervals of two weeks we um and being consistent in terms of how much we feed and what we feed each time there's um there's a little bit of liquid happening over here i think the juice started coming out of the um yeah started coming out of the out of the grapefruit and maybe even out of the coffee. I just took this coffee right out of the um and the fil the filter right out of the machine a moment ago. <laughs> so it was still a little bit hot and wet when we started. So here too, I'm paying no attention to the order, but I just hope I don't miss a element. Coming in with everything at random at random uh arrangements. Ooh, I got a lot of grit there. And then we could use this nice new coffee filter right here as our feeding zone. But we've still got the, the main attraction. I think we've been placing these in face up like this. I guess my thought was, you know, maybe the moisture will remain with the peel instead of just dropping out if it was placed in upside down. And then maybe that'll just keep the, the peels themselves more damp for a longer you know amount of time and maybe more appealing for the worms to come over and nibble on i think we gave the other systems too right so let's give this one one more little dose of prepared bedding to cover up with and that seems like a good fair setup for all three systems show where we last fed right there and get covered up Oop. level things off all right, everyone, I got a split. I got a tight schedule today, <laughs> but hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please, as always, don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone, have a great day. Bye now.